Welcome. We're going to talk today about the truths about healing from toxic relationships. My name is Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you understand, heal from, and transform your life after being in toxic relationships or being raised by toxic people and narcissists in particular. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and if you need coaching or group coaching or peer support, always know that you can find that information in the main description of every video. First thing I'll say, one of one very true truth <laughs> is that healing, there's no timeline, you guys. There's no structure to healing. There's no method to healing that will be something that fits every individual. There is no timeline. It's not a linear thing. It's not a step thing. You cannot step your way through healing. You can't. People can say, I'm in the anger stage. Well, what does that really mean when it comes to healing from emotional manipulation and emotional toxic relationships? That that what it means is that part of you is angry. Another part of you feels grief. Another part of you is over it. Another part of you, you see, none of it, it goes in a straight line. It's not like you're full force all in, in one direction at any given time. And so that's why we, there's no real steps for this to walk you through it, unfortunately and fortunately, because you see, the thing is, another truth, I'll throw a positive truth in here, is that through this experience, you can come to a more clear vision and live a more um, open and pure, authentic life. You can become more aware of who you are, just more honest with yourself and open with yourself about who you really are so that your authenticity shines through and you're no longer living in a contrivance of other people's imagination and, and indoctrination into you. Okay. So Yes, it is something that is individual, isn't going to be a linear thing where everyone follows the same steps and you get there. Um, there's lots of helpful tips that, of course, everyone could try and probably benefit a little bit from, but it's really taking what you have experienced and applying the information that you're getting to see if it helps some piece of it, okay? And then moving on, and if it's not working, take the tip and put it in a little like place in your head for later and try it again later. One truth I will say here that may not be very popular here, but it is being very careful in what you choose to listen to and who you choose to listen to and how you take the information in when it comes to trying to understand narcissism. There are a lot of people with not your best interest in heart. They're not actually interested in helping people. What they're heal, what they're interested in is something more self-serving or popularity or fame or whatever, right? Because they know how to talk about a narcissist. Being really careful because the whole, let's come to the next point I want to make, which is surround yourself with influences that are open to benefiting and uh, moving toward a, a more a healing for you. So surround yourself with people who are supportive. Surround yourself with situations that feel right for you. Fill yourself with information that gives your mind what it needs to know, but isn't sticky, yucky. Another truth about healing from toxic relationships with narcissistic people, narcissistic upbringings, is that you are going to have to learn to trust yourself. And this goes hand in hand with the last thing I said, well, how do you know if something is good for you or bad for you or beneficial for you or actually harming you more? And how do you know if you're giving supply and, or just watching? How do you know, right? You learn to trust your instinct. You learn to know who you are and you learn to listen to your mind your emotions and your body and that connection because there are so many subtle messages always being communicated between that within ourselves that if we listen to it, we would start he uh, steering our lives in a direction of healing rather than in directions of people pleasing, uh, pouring out of supply, placing empathy on people and things that are not 
um, reciprocal or, you know, toxic to us if we learn to listen to that. And so how do you do that? Right. So that one truth is that we have to learn what even it means to trust yourself and how to function in that. And that takes time. And it's okay. Like I said, there's no timeline. And you know what? These are all just truths. If you're nowhere near touching any of these, then it's okay. These are just truths. These are something we all have to go through. I won't say all. The majority of us have to go through the majority of these things, right? In order to find a different way of being, find a different way of relating to yourself. There is a truth. When you are healing from a toxic relationship or toxic upbringing, you will find as you heal, this is one way you know you're healing, okay? This is one indication of like, oh, there's been a lot of healing going on. When your relationship with self is different and it is less judging, less critical, less harsh, more accepting, more curious, more um, adventurous, more vulnerable to self, this is what we've been talking about a lot lately, right? Is just opening up to yourself so that you can learn to trust yourself, to be your own person. Another truth is that as you're healing from toxic relationships, toxic people, whatever, you're going to learn to set boundaries, okay? It's kind of an essential thing. You learn to, you can't do things. Here's the thing. Here's the truth. You can't do things the same way you've always done them. If you have a pattern of having toxic people in your life, if you were raised by it, and that's what you know of as love, that's what you know as friendships, that's what you know of self-worth is to have the reflection of the narcissist back at you. There's no way you can do things the same and expect a different result. So there's going to be a lot of shaking and moving and grooving and changing that happens in your life. And it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to make you feel like you don't know if you're doing the right thing or, or you're going to have these giant weights lifted off of you. And in the process, you're going to lose some people in your life. You're going to, it's going to start shedding off layers of people who are not aligned with your healing and, or who simply can't let you change people who need to control things, people who need things to be as they are. Or you're going to make jump to conclusions very fast that someone might be toxic and you might push people away. And so there's going to be this awkward sort of wobbly stance, right? As you learn to uh, function differently and think differently and behave differently and act differently. It's such a process. And everybody's uh, journey is different. It's unique. It's beautiful because everybody gets to be right about what they need for their life. How, how many times have you been told that? Probably never, right? That you're right about what you need for your life. Um, and everybody's going to have their own version of that. And so, and it's not selfish to be that way. It is selfless because from that place, you're able to give back to the world very differently. And you're able to give back to the life around you and the people and the plants and the animals and all that around you. If you're in a different place inside yourself, the thing about, here's another truth. We're going to get, you're going to get really wrapped up in your own psychology. You're going to get really wrapped up in your own pain. You're going to get really, really invested in the healing process. Okay. It's going to become consuming and overwhelming or just whelming or annoying or whatever it is for you. It's going to be often I mean, this is a truth, maybe not for everyone, but for a lot of people, it becomes, I mean, something, and it, 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 it kind of needs to for a little bit. There, there's um, a dedication that it takes to continue and continue every time you keep getting knocked down, every time you heal one piece and you realize, oh my gosh, now my inner voice is still negative. There's no narcissist around here, hasn't been one for miles, right? And yet here it is. And so then you start working on that. And then as you're healing that, you think, wow, I've really shut off this part of my emotions. I've really done that, whatever it is. Like, so you keep finding other things. It is a journey in self-transformation. That's what it is. And you cannot, you just don't go poof, fairy dust, magic, and boom, you're in the ball dress or, or suit or whatever it is you wear, right? And you're a different person. That would be putting on a mask. This is from the inside out. This is from the experience of self 
that you maybe have never tapped into before. Okay. It's from the experience of self emanating outward and relating to life from that place. So how, how, how can you do that without everything around you kind of going into some weird wavy line, like everything's different than I thought it was reality. And then re assimilating everything and like reorganizing yourself as it relates to that place. And I don't mean you're going to get selfish. What I mean is you're going to have the experience of what it's actually like to be you, not what you've been told, not what you've been conditioned to think, not the training and the nonsense that other people have put there, but what you actually are like. And so, yeah, that's a big, a big, big shift. And, and it's a lot of change and it's going to have all kinds of feelings for you. And that's that's a reality that comes out of this kind of situation if you continue on the healing journey and that is your choice to do if that's something you want for your life okay some people like it a lot more simple and that's okay too they just want to feel better <laughs> right like they're just like i just don't want to think about the narcissist all this stuff you're talking about is way too much whatever i just don't want to think about the narcissist okay well in that you've got to retrain yourself to think about your life, your path, right? And stop thinking about them and why they did this and why they did that. There's a truth too, that you have to learn to disconnect from that narcissistic person that's stuck in your mind, right? And stuck in your in the process of how you think and feel. And you've got to learn to go, boom, I'm following this path, which is mine. They're in the past and they're back there. That's, an, that's a truth and it's difficult.